did I put my microphone? Oh, there it is. In the laundry basket. This is where I always look for my microphone. In the laundry basket. Yeah. Alrighty, hello again everyone. It is good to be back. It is Monday. Welcome to the first installment of Wonderful Aircraft Weekly. Today we're going to be talking about something uh, very basic and something that is really the basis for all the aviation. I figured it would be good to start off with something simple and something that is sort of the base level of things you need to know if you're getting into aviation. And that is, how does an aircraft fly? How does it float? What causes it to do that. So today we're going to be talking about lift and how that works. The basic principle behind lift is that uh, is, is based off of something called Bernoulli's Law. I, I apologize if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, um, but it's Bernoulli's Law basically says that fast moving air is at a lower pressure than slow moving air. And if you have ever watched, you know, a sci-fi movie or something like that, or something set in space, it's always the kind of situation where if a door breaks off the spacecraft, people or things get sucked out of it. Same with airplanes too that are at high altitude and whatnot. The reason for that is because, especially in space, as I'm sure you all know, there is no air in space. There is no air whatsoever, therefore there is no air pressure whatsoever. And what that means is that it's a very low pressure out in space, but it's a very high pressure in the spacecraft because it has to be so the astronauts can breathe. So if a door were to break off, higher pressure always wants to move towards lower pressure to even itself out. That is how it works scientifically. It wants to move towards lower pressure, always. And that's why everything gets sucked out of the spacecraft and into space. And it's the same principle when it comes to wings. Wings are shaped flat on the bottom and curved on the top as you can probably see behind me on the screen. And what that does is as you can see with my hand here, my hand is, you know, this long, let's say from the base of my palm to my fingertips. Um, but if I'm to go like this, it's this long. It's different. It's this long, but my, my hand has not shrunken at all. It has not lost any of its mass. It has not lost any of its surface area. I'm just bending it. So it's a shorter distance from end to end, but it's still the same surface area. It's sa still the same size. And what that means is, with a wing, that means the air traveling over the top of it has to go a lot faster in order to cover the same amount of distance than the air going underneath. The air going underneath can just go straight, straight through. This air has to go up and over this little mountain in order to get to the other side in which case it has to move a lot faster. Remember what we said, faster moving air has lower pressure. And that means the slower moving air at the bottom has higher pressure. Higher pressure air always wants to move towards low pressure. That causes the air down here to want to move towards the air up here, thus pushing up on the wing, which is thus pushing up on the airplane. And that is what the basic principle for what causes an aircraft to fly. Now there are different ways to create lift. Um, you'll notice a lot of aircraft have uh, flaps and they'll lower them down on takeoff and landing. What they do is they're a part of the wing that bends downward like this. And what that does is essentially direct air downwards essentially and create more lift. You'll also see aircraft that have slats or flaps on the front of the wing that will extend outwards to increase the wing's surface area, to make it create more lift. There's another way it'll do that. So there are different ways to create extra lift, but the basic principle is the one I just described. Now, there's also something called angle of attack. And what that means is the angle at which the aircraft is hitting the airflow. And to an extent, angle of attack is a good thing. That's why flaps work the way they do. They are bent like this, so they direct air downwards. But an actual wing hitting, you know, the air like this, let's say, instead of like this, means that it's gonna create a bit more lift. That's what it's also gonna mean. But it's also gonna mean that it creates more drag. So that's why 
aircraft stall is because when that angle of attack gets too high to the point where there's a lot of drag and where the air going over the wing gets cut off because it's being blocked by the wing itself. The air coming at it is being blocked and being pushed out this way. There's no air up against the top of the wing. Therefore, there is no lift and the aircraft just falls like a rock. That can happen whether an aircraft is flying too slow, at too high an angle of attack, or etc. This same basic principle applies even for helicopters as well. If you look at a helicopter's blade, it's shaped like a wing. Think of each blade on a helicopter as a wing. Except the reason that a helicopter can hover is because that wing is always moving and always has air moving over it regardless if the entire craft is moving. Because that wing is spinning around and around. Therefore, that wing is always getting air over it. So even if the craft is just sitting, right, hovering in the air, that wing is still spinning around and around and around, thus still getting air and still creating lift. So it's the same basic principle for just about anything that flies, except kites, really. I mean, kites don't really have an air airfoil specifically. Um, they're more like a parachute or something that's just very light and catches the air. But for things that are heavier, it's always the same basic principle. Rounded on the top, flat on the bottom. However, some wings have what's called camber. And this can be seen in this picture behind me. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but there are different wing types. The kind you'll see on fighters, race planes, interceptors, and such are the traditional shape and very thin. They're very good. They're good for creating enough lift and good for very low drag. But you'll also see wings that are the same shape but a lot thicker. They create more lift, and those will be used on transports, airliners, and such. But then you'll see ones that have camber to them, and what that means is the bottom half of the wing is also curved. So what that means is it creates more lift. It also creates more drag, though. So you'll see those on aircraft that need lift but don't need a whole lot of speed. You'll also see symmetrical wings, which are curved on both the top and bottom, which give the aircraft better stall handling cap capabilities. Excuse me, I can't talk today. Blech. But yeah, that is essentially the basics of lift. And you'll notice propellers are even shaped that same way. Uh, and because propellers are also very miniature wings, that's how they blow air back and forth. They create lift because they're spinning and they push that lift back um, over the airplane. Also, you'll notice in high-performance turns uh, with fighters, they'll bank completely 90 degrees and pull. And what that helps them do, if they have enough lift, is when they turn, all that lift that's being usually being forced downwards is now being forced this way, and that allows them to turn really sharply. It also means that they have less lift downwards, of course, but if it's an aircraft like a fighter that's fast enough, that's not a problem. Obviously, you wouldn't see an airliner do this. But at the end of the day, it's all the same basic principle. It's all the Bernoulli law. And that means faster moving air has lower pressure. And so it's always the same basic principle. It's altered a little bit for each aircraft type, but it's always the same basic principle. So there you have it, guys. This is pretty simple and basic, so I uh, thought I'd start off easy since this is the first installment. Um, and so uh, next week, I'm not sure what, we'll, what I'll be talking about next week. We'll see. Um, I'm thinking I might do something on uh, like uh, control surfaces and such. Maybe. We'll see. But anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope I didn't ramble too much. And, you know, I hope it made sense. Um, but if this video helped you out, let me know. Please share it with your friends. I'd love to share uh, my passion for aviation with people. And um, I will see you later this week, I hope. Uh, thank you for watching. Without further ado, keep calm and fly high. And I will see you next time.